Revelation of Peter The Savior speaks with Peter in the temple. The Savior was sitting in the temple in the 300th year since its foundation, in the month of the completion of the tenth pillar, and he was at rest in the plentitude of the living, incorruptible majesty. He said to me, Peter, blessed are those who belong to the Father, for they are above the heavens. It is the Father who through me revealed life to people from life. I reminded those built on what is strong that they should listen to my teaching and learn to tell the difference between words of unrighteousness or lawlessness and words of righteousness, which come from the height of every word of the fullness of truth. These people have been enlightened in good pleasure by him whom the principalities sought but did not find, nor was he proclaimed among any of the generations of the prophets. Now I have appeared among these people as the Son of Man exalted above the heavens, among a huge number of people of the same nature. Peter, you are to become perfect in keeping with your name, along with me, the one who has chosen you, for through you I have begun a work for the remnant whom I called to knowledge. So be strong until the imitator of righteousness, ellipsis, of the one who first called you, he called you so that you might understand him properly with regard to the distinction between the sinews of his hands and feet and the crowning by those of the middle region over against his radiant body. He will be brought in hope of providing a reward of honor, and tonight he will reprove you three times. The priests and the people threatened Jesus and Peter. When he said this, I saw the priests and the people running toward us with stones, as if they would kill us, and I was afraid we would die. He said to me, Peter, I have told you many times that they are blind and have no leader. If you want to know their blindness, put your hands on the eyes of your garment and tell me what you see. When I did this, I saw nothing, and I said, No one sees in this way. Then he told me, Do it again. Fear and joy arose in me, for I saw a new light brighter than the light of day, and it came down on the Savior. I told him what I saw. He said to me again, Put your hands to your ears and listen to what the priests and the people are saying. I listened to the priests, and they were sitting with the scholars, and the multitude was shouting with a loud voice. When he heard what I said about this, he said to me, Use your ears and listen to what they are saying. I listened again. They are praising you as you are sitting here. When I said this, the Savior replied, I have told you that these people are blind and deaf. Now listen to the things I am telling you in secret and keep them. Do not tell them to the children of this age, for they will denounce you during these ages since they are ignorant of you, but they will praise you when there is knowledge. Some first follow the true Savior, but then turn away to worship a dead man. At first many will accept our words, but they will turn away again according to the will of the father of their error, because they have done his will and the father of error will disclose them in his judgment as servants of the word. Those who have associated with people of error will become their prisoners, since they are without perception. But the good person, who is pure and upright, will be handed over to the dealer in death, in the kingdom of those who praise the Christ of a future restored world. And they also praise people who preach this falsehood, people who will come after you, they will hold on to the name of a dead man, thinking that in this way they will become pure, but instead they will become more and more defiled. They will fall into a name of error and into the hand of an evil deceiver with complicated doctrines, and they will be dominated by heresy. Some of them will blaspheme the truth and proclaim evil teachings, and they will speak evil against each other. Some of them will give themselves a name for they stand in the power of the rulers, 
the name of a man and a naked woman of many forms and many sufferings. And those who say all this will inquire into dreams, and if they claim that a dream came from a demon, which is appropriate for their error, they shall be granted perdition instead of incorruption. Mortal souls are different from immortal souls. Evil cannot produce good fruit. Everything, wherever it comes from, produces what is like it. Not every soul is of the truth or of immortality. In our opinion, every soul of these present times is assigned to death and is always enslaved, since this soul is created to serve its own desires. These souls are destined for eternal destruction, in which they are, and from which they are, for they love the creatures of matter that came into being with them. But immortal souls are not like these, Peter. Still, as long as the hour has not yet come, an immortal soul resembles mortal souls. It will not reveal its true nature. It alone is immortal and contemplates immortality and has faith, and desires to renounce these mortal souls. People do not gather figs from thistles or thorns, if they are wise, nor grapes from thorn bushes. Something always stays in that state in which it exists. If something is in a bad state, that becomes destruction and death for the soul. But the soul abides in the Eternal One the source of life and immortality of life that these resemble. All that does not really exist will dissolve into nothingness, and those who are deaf and blind associate only with people like them. Some church leaders lack knowledge and lead people. Others will wander from evil words and mysteries that lead people astray. Some who do not understand the mysteries and speak of what they do not understand will boast that the mystery of truth is theirs alone. In ignorance, they will embrace pride and will envy the immortal soul that has been used as down payment. For every authority, principality, and power of the realms wants to be with the immortal souls in the created world in order that these powers, who do not come from what exists, and have forgotten who they are, may be glorified by the immortal souls that do exist. The powers have not been saved or shown the way by them, though they always have wished to become imperishable. For if an immortal soul is empowered by a spirit of thought, at once it is joined by one of those who were led astray. Many others, who oppose truth and are messengers of error, will ordain their error, and their law against my pure thoughts. Since they see from one perspective only, they think that good and evil come from the same source. They do business in my word, and they will establish harsh fate in which the generation of immortal souls will run in vain until my return. For the immortal souls will surely remain among them, and I have forgiven the transgressions into which they have fallen through their adversaries and I have redeemed them from their slavery to give them freedom. Some will create a mere imitation of the remnant in the name of a dead man, who is Ermas, the firstborn of unrighteousness, in order that the little ones may not believe in the light that is. These are the workers who will be cast into the outer darkness, away from the children of light. For they will not enter, nor do they allow those who are going to their destination for their deliverance to enter. Others, who are martyrs, bishops, and deacons, are dry canals. Still others among them endure suffering and think they will perfect the wisdom of the brotherhood that really exists, the spiritual fellowship with those united in communion, through which the wedding of incorruptibility will be revealed. Instead, what will appear is a mere imitation, the kindred generation of the sisterhood. These people oppress their brothers and say to them, Through this fellowship our God has mercy, 
since salvation comes to us alone through this. They do not know the punishment of those who rejoice at what was done to the little ones, those who watched when the little ones were taken captive. And there are others among those outside our number who call themselves bishops and deacons, as if they have received authority from God, but they bow before the judgment of the leaders. These people are dry canals. The little ones eventually will reign. I said, I am afraid because of what you have told me. Although there are only a few phonies among us, there are many others who lead astray and subdue multitudes of living ones. And when they speak your name, people will believe them. The Savior replied, For a specified time proportionate to their error, they will rule over the little ones. And after the completion of error, the being of immortal understanding, who does not grow old, will become new, and the little ones will rule over their rulers. That being will pull out their error by its root, and put it to shame, and expose it for all the liberties it has taken. Peter, such people will never change. Come, Let's proceed to the fulfillment of the good pleasure of the incorruptible Father. For look, those who will bring judgment on themselves are approaching and will put themselves to shame. They cannot touch me. Peter, you will stand in their midst, but don't be afraid, though you are faint-hearted. Their understanding will be gone, for the Invisible One has taken a stand against them. Peter sees the crucifixion, and the Savior explains it. When he said this, I saw him apparently being arrested by them. I said, What do I see, Lord? Is it really you they are seizing? And are you holding on to me? And who is the one smiling and laughing above the cross? Is it someone else whose feet and hands they are hammering? The Savior said to me, The one you see smiling and laughing above the cross is the living Jesus. The one into whose hands and feet they are driving nails is his fleshly part, the substitute for him. They are putting to shame the one who came into being in the likeness of the living Jesus. Look at him, and look at me. When I looked, I said, Lord, no one sees you. Let's get out of here. He answered me, I told you they are blind. Forget about them. Look at how they do not know what they are saying. For they have put to shame the son of their own glory instead of the one who serves me. The Savior appears to Peter in a bright light. Then I saw someone about to approach us who looked like the one laughing above the cross. But this one was intertwined with Holy Spirit, and he was the Savior. And there was an unspeakably bright light surrounding them, and a multitude of ineffable and invisible angels praising them. When the one who glorifies was revealed, I myself saw him. He said to me, Be strong. For these mysteries have been given to you, so that you might know clearly that the one they crucified is the firstborn, the abode of demons, the stone vessel in which they live, the man of Elohim, the man of the cross, who is under the law. But the one who is standing near him is the living Savior, who was in him at first and was arrested but was set free. He is standing and observing with pleasure that those who did evil to him are divided among themselves. And he is laughing at their lack of perception, knowing that they were born blind. The one capable of suffering must remain, since the body is the substitute, but what was set free was my bodiless body. I am the spirit of thought filled with radiant light. The one you saw approaching me is our fullness of thought which unites the perfect light with my Holy Spirit.
The Savior tells Peter to proclaim what has been revealed. You are to present what you have seen to those who are strangers. You are not of this age. For there will be no grace among those who are not immortal, but only among those chosen because of their immortal nature, which has shown it can receive the one who gives in abundance. For this reason I have said, Whoever has will be given more, and this person will have in abundance. But whoever does not have, that is, the person of this world, who is completely dead, who derives from the planting of creation and procreation, who thinks he can lay hold of someone else of a mortal nature when such a person appears, this will be taken away from that person and added to whatever exists. So be courageous and fear nothing, for I shall be with you that none of your enemies may prevail over you. Peace be with you. Be strong. When the Savior said these things, Peter came to his senses. The Revelation of Peter